From the Douglas County Courthouse at 8700 Hospital Drive, this is 8700. Hello everyone, I'm Rick Martin, your host for 8700 on DC TV 23. Welcome to our studios here at the Douglas County Courthouse at 8700 Hospital Drive in Douglasville, Georgia. Thanks for joining me. Beginning October 1st, landfill disposal rates increased. But though rates have gone up to remain competitive, local waste haulers are receiving a discount. The Douglas County Board of Commissioners voted 3-2 to two for the discount at the first board meeting of the month. In other news, two Douglas County firefighters were hospitalized after battling a large commercial building fire Monday. The business, Custom Bath Products, suffered a near total loss. Investigators on the scene of the blaze determined the fire was accidental after employees were mixing chemicals to build a countertop. Firefighters on the scene say no employees were hurt. The firefighters were treated and released from the hospital. The Douglas County Board of Commissioners approved a proclamation designating October as Cybersecurity Awareness Month here in Douglas County. This is all in part of a national campaign to help raise awareness to the growing threats to technology users. Two staffers of the Information Services Department for Douglas County Russ Martin and Ruel Douglas presented the proclamation before the Board of Commissioners. The statistics are alarming. Martin says 55% of American adults have been compromised in some form due to cybercrime, and approximately $450 million per year is lost from the economy as a result of cybercrime. The Douglas County Board of Commissioners has proclaimed October as Behavior Health Month, and a series of events have been scheduled, including a community forum on Tuesday, October 24th at the Douglas Conference Center, Douglasville Conference Center, at 6 p.m. The mental health awareness campaign is titled Stomp the Stigma. Douglas County is joining the ranks with over 620 community-based Keep America affiliates across the U.S. to help promote recycling end littering and beautify America's communities. In an effort to help the environment, Douglas County is joining millions of volunteers, municipalities, elected officials, and the support of corporate partners across the entire country. When we return, we have a special guest as part of our Newsmaker segment. Commander Herb Franklin of the Douglas County Dive Team will be joining us and telling us about this exclusive unit in our county. Herb, many people don't know Douglas County has a dive team for recovery operations that falls under the Douglas County Emergency Management Agency. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, we started uh, working with uh, the pre predecessor of uh, Jason's, uh, which was Curtis Little. Uh, he had a team going and it sort of fell apart and I was really involved in the diving community and we were doing a lot of training with the uh, National Academy of Police Divers. And when you talk about Jason, you're talking about Jason Mulholland, That's the correct. director of Emergency Management Agency, right? That's correct. Okay. Uh, once we got, you know, the training and everything done, we had uh, several people from the dive shop, which I owned in Douglasville, uh, which we closed a few years back and a lot of the guys wanted to, you know, donate to the community help the community. I put some final chapters into some, you know, episodes. So we, we, we went along with that and uh, it grew from there. We went up to, I think, uh, 18 people and it, it, it rotates sometimes. So we have, a, we have a pretty good pool of people to, to draw from. Super, super. So, you know, I had the pleasure of meeting members of your team. One of the most unique things I thought was really special about that was the fact that they're volunteers, I didn't realize that. Yes, sir, that's correct. Um, as volunteers, uh, you know, that is something that you don't hear of often. Um, what sort of, how do you find them? <laughs> I guess I sort of solicit them. 
Okay. You know, I ask them, you know, they ask me what I do, and, uh, and I tell them about the dive team, and, you know, they, they sparks an interest. And then, uh, next thing I know, they're wanting to fill out applications, uh, uh, talk with Jason Milholland, and, uh, you know, fill out the paperwork and get, get on the team. And we train as much as possible uh, to keep them, you know, hungry with the, with the activity. So how many members of the team are there? Right now, I believe we have 12. We were able to accommodate uh, and interview two more over the weekend for the uh, September Saturday, Saturdays. Okay, 12. And, uh, you know, as I understand it, you're a commander of the Douglas County team. That's correct. Team, that is. Tell me a little bit about yourself, because that's a special title, I would say. Yeah, the title was given to me by the guys when we were trying to get the structure for this uh, uh, organization. Uh, we drew up uh, SOGs, which are standard operating guidelines for the team, uh, different positions in, within the, uh, the organization, and this was one that they, they voluntarily gave me, and it, it fit being a water-based operation. Now, there are a lot of dangers that go into diving. Um, you know, can you tell us a little bit about that? With public safety, safety diving, yes, there's a, a bunch of uh, hazards. Uh, one of the primary ones are structures in the water that have been thrown in there, uh, steel parts, cars, uh, shards of glass from the cars. Fishing line is one of the worst ones we have to deal with. They take, the hook gets pulled off, the, the line is in there, and we get entangled. And, uh, we're, we're really close on the monitoring of, of the safety of each diver. What sort of missions are you guys called on since you mentioned you know, public we, safety? Evidence recovery, uh, naturally uh, uh, drownings, uh, car recoveries, um, stolen goods, uh, anything that can be thrown in the water that people feel that it's going to disappear in the water. Is this something you went to school for or? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> drastically. There, there's, uh, a lot of schools that we went to, uh, trainings with, like I said, National Academy of Police Diver. I'm also an instructor for ERDI, which is Emergency Response Diver International, which is a worldwide organization, uh, which has the cutting edge uh, information and training for public safety diving. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. I mean, you know, I think, uh, are you originally from Douglas County? Or? No, sir. Oh, wow. I'm um, originally from New York City. Uh, went to one year high school in uh, Voorhees College in, in uh, Brooklyn, New York, and then I moved to, to West Palm Beach where my sister lived and stayed there for about three or four years and I uh, was doing a lot of traveling at that point in time. And I moved to the Douglasville area because it's a whole lot more centrally located. And uh, then I decided to pick up diving. And that was about 35, uh, 36 years ago. Wow. What's the most uh, glamorous place you've ever went diving? Um, my favorite place is in Bimini. It's a little island 45 miles off the coast of Fort Lauderdale. Uh, very few people know about it, and uh, the, the, the life is great, and uh, the people are good over there. It's, we have a real good time whenever we go over there. Tell me a little bit about what it's like diving deep underneath water. Uh, you know, for those who have never experienced it? Uh, the first 33 feet is the biggest change in the, the whole cycle. Uh, pressures double within the first 33 feet. Uh, and after that, they, they get increased, but smaller amounts. Uh, your sight changes uh, when you're diving, look through a set of gla uh, gog goggles. Through mask, you, everything's closer and larger. It's not uncommon to have a diver reach for something and it'd be just that far from where he's working. Um, uh, other than that, uh, clearing their ears and, and uh, you know, being conscious of what's going on, that, that's the, the, the biggest thing about it. What advice would you give someone if they were in high school or college and they wanted to consider becoming part of a dive team? Learn to swim. We have several people that want to do so and they, they don't know how to swim yet and it's a progression. Uh, we, we encourage everybody, I don't care what walk of life they are, learn to swim. Not only for their safety, 
but for you know progression in whether they want to go into diving or marine biology or anything like that? You know, that is one of the most uh, life-saving uh, steps that's encouraged all across uh, the country. Um, you know, so I'm glad you were able to mention that. Um, you know, if there's anything, um, as volunteers, you know, shore funding is, is limited, it obviously. Is. is there something you can encourage people to do? If, if they want to make a donation, uh, they need to speak with uh, Director Jason Milholland with the EMA, and he'll direct them on how they can, you know, financially help out. Uh, if they have equipment uh, that they're through using, call Jason again and uh, he'll get with me and we'll look it over and make sure we can use it or not, you know, but uh, other than that, you know, we just, we try to do the best we can with what we got. For anyone watching, any viewers watching who would be interested in becoming a Douglas County Dive uh, team member, what would they need? They would need a minimum of open water training, a certification uh, of just basic open water training, preferably advanced, uh, and we would like to have them with rescue certification, uh, but we can do that portion in-house. Uh, once they, they become part of the team, uh, they do the training with us and can find uh, non-operation uh, environment and they can do the diving there but we don't let them dive with us for a year on a scene. Why? Because we don't know their, where their threshold is of, of, of stress management. Gotcha. We want to know, make sure that they're going to be there for the, for the individual divers. We put them in a tender position which is the operator of the comm system or the lines that uh, go to the diver where we communicate through. It's a, it's a rope that we use, uh, a certain amount of tugs per uh, information that we want communicated to the diver. Tell me something, is, is one sort of diving operation uh, more stressful than the other or um, impactful, I should say? For example, I'm trying to Imagine that you know if you're driving, if you're excuse me, if you're diving for a car, right? A car that's gone in, mm -hmm. uh, that's been abandoned. It'll be different than if you have to recover a body. They're both stressful, uh, mainly because an open water diver is used to visibility in excess of 15, 20 to 100, 100 feet. Where the visibility that we have is the only way I can explain it. You go in the center of your house in the closet with all the lights in the house and shut the door in that closet. That's what you see. Wow, wow, awesome. And how long have you been doing this? <laughs> About 30 years. <laughs> 30 years. For public safety, yes, sir. All right. Awesome, all right. Well, thanks, thanks for joining us. Thank you.